Hello everyone and welcome to another very very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to be building this cool animation. So as you can see there is a main big circle over here and then there are a bunch of small or big circles that emanate from this circle and you have this very cool gooey effect over that. So let's get started. So first things first, I'll go to codity.io in the HTML. I'm just going to put container and then within that container I'm just going to put eight uh, let's just give a class dot and then let's put 11 actually divs over here so we have pretty much 11 divs within the container with the class dot and let's add another one with the class circle for our big circle over here right now what I'm going to do is making sure that I put the container in the center. So let's put it basically width of, I don't know, let's put 100 pixel height of 100 pixel, position absolute, left 50%, top 50%, and then transform, translate, minus 50% and minus 50%. So if I give it a background color red, you'll see that it actually pretty much in the center, right? And then let's style our uh, circle. So the circle within our container, which going back to the HTML pane, you'll see that we have this circle over here. Just gonna give it the width of, let's say 200 pixel height of 200 pixel obviously let's put the position absolute and then make sure that and the reason why we put it absolute because we want it to be freely positioned here and uh, let's give it a background of tomato okay give it a border radius of 50 percent to make it round and then you know obviously one way to center it is setting the left and top and transform but i'm going to show you another way to do that so if you set the margin to auto and then for the left give it a very big you know negative number and also uh well let's just do this and then go ahead and basically left right top and bottom you'll see that it actually centers itself within the container right and now the idea is that for the dots that you'll see here coming out of it basically they are in the center and then uh, probably with a big scale and then they sort of go on different random directions uh, and then the, the scale becomes zero for each of them right so in order to do that i'm just going to go ahead and choose SAS or SCSS for our preprocessor so that I can use basically some variables and for loops. I know that the num elements that I have is 11. So let's define a variable called num elements 11, right? And then I'm going to go and add a for loop here. So for i from 1 through 11 now let's see what we can do here let's uh, say a container dot because that's the class we gave for the dots so container dot and then nth child choosing the children from 1 to 11 using the interpolation in the sas so you can see that the way you do it is hash and then you know curly brackets and then dollar sign i that we have here let's give them a width of well let's say maybe 40 pixel height of 40 pixel and let's give them the same sort of color so background color will be tomato the same color as the big circle uh, you can see the pile up over here set the position to be absolute and then set the while well, the border radius to be 50 percent just to show you that it's over there one pixel solid blue and you'll see that they are actually over here 
with the same background color. So let's keep them for now like this so that we can actually see them. Now in order to center them, I'm going to use the same technique. So position absolute, we already have. And then margin auto and all these left, right, top, bottom. So if I put it over here, you'll see that it actually scales. It actually puts itself in the center of the container that we have. In this case, it is the container up here, which we created earlier, which pretty much puts it in the middle of the circle, right? So now we're cool. The second step is that, as you can see in this animation, they go in sort of random directions, right? So basically some random sort of angle they're using, and then they kind of have a different sort of distance from the main circle. You see this one, for example, goes further than this one. In order to do that, first and foremost, it means that each of those circles have their own animation. And since we are in the for loop here, we're going to create keyframes here. Let's call this uh, anim dash, and then I'm going to use the same interpolation to, you know, put different names for each keyframes here for each of those circles. And then I'm going to choose from. So basically the same technique as in the previous tutorials where we put circles around the circumference of a bigger circle. I'm just going to say transform, rotate, you know, let's put zero for now, but we're going to change that. Translate them to 200 pixel and then rotate them back to minus zero degrees. So this is the degree that we have to kind of randomize to generate these sort of, uh, you know, circles going on different directions. So basically there's different angles that are, is generated randomly for each of those. So here inside the for loop, I'm just going to create a variable. I'm just going to call it angle. And SAS has a function called random, which generates a number between zero and one, right? which is perfect. So I'm just going to choose this. Now, instead of this degree, I know that the circle itself is 360 degrees. So what I'm going to do is choose this random angle, multiply it by one degree, and then for this one also minus one degree, but also I'm just going to multiply this by angle, right? The next thing I need to do is now that I have created this animation with the syntax inside each of the divs that is generated by this for loop, I'm just going to use animation using the same naming that I used here for each of those divs. And let's put four seconds. Let's see what we get. So this is pretty much the animation that we get, which is kind of wrong, right? Let's put it infinite here so that we actually see that that actually infinitely runs because here we have from well we haven't added it to so basically the from will be the same angle the translate would be zero because we want it to initially be here as you can see and then the two i'm going to copy and paste this one and then i'll change this to 200 pixel right so now you can see that it actually moves out. But now the, you know, the problem is that when we use this uh, formula like this for its, this angle, this random actually generates the same number for all of our divs, right? The div, the, not the same angle, sorry, the same value for all of those. Uh, you know, each of the divs within this for loop will get a different random value. The problem is that instead of one degree, I actually need to multiply it by 360, right? That's how, let's put this as well, 360 and 360. Then you'll see that we get this kind of cool animation. So basically, all these circles, based on this random angle, multiply, because this is zero, uh, between zero and one, so the least value, if it's zero, it's going to be zero degree, the bigger one will be one, so it's going to be 360, which is correct, and then obviously, 
uh, the values between 0 and 1 multiplied by 360 will be somewhere around the circle, right? So, so far, so good. The other thing that we have to change is this. We have to randomize the sort of the distance that these circles travel outside. Because here, if you see the original one, some of the circles actually move further than some other circles. And in order to do that, we know that we have to play with this value. So maybe if I choose multiply this by the random function, hopefully we're going to get different distances, right? You'll see that some of them move a little bit further, but some of them least. So because we know that our circle radius is around 100 here, so you can see that it's 200 width and height, so half of it will be our radius. So what I'm going to, or half of the radius, what I'm going to do is that I just add 100 pixels so that they actually go out of the circle. So for example, you see this one is further. The next thing we want to do is play with the scale, right? So if I change this scale to, you know, zero at the two, you will see that hopefully what happens is it actually moves this to scale zero. So the reason why it didn't work is because I need to probably put scale one here. And you will see that they kind of change to scale zero, which is exactly what I want, right? Just gonna go remove this border here. We don't need well basically let yeah, we don't need it. So you can see that now these are kind of emanating from the circle itself. Isn't that cool? The other thing that we have to actually change is the initial scale of these, which should be also random, right? So instead of one here, I'm just gonna use the random function so that we get a scale from zero to one and maybe add three to it. So basically we're gonna get this kind of sort of scaling, the initial scaling. So it's a little bit too much. I'm just gonna say two. So you'll see that it actually looks kind of nicer. And the next thing we wanna do is using the infamous GUI effect I'm just going to share this prototype with you on the description of this tutorial. So I'm just going to paste it at the end of my HTML. It has the ID queue. Uh, I need to go to the container element of all of these circles, including the bigger circle, and use the syntax filter URL. And we had the ID goo, right? So now you will see that we get this kind of cool sort of animation effect. The reason why it gets cut out because the problem is that our container is not big enough. So, you know, we know that we kind of translate it to 200 multiplied by random plus 100. So this one, the container should at least be 300 to the width and height. Right. So now you will see that we get kind of a cool sort of gooey effect and it needs to be a little bit bigger. So let's just go ahead and move it all the way up to 600. And now you will see that we don't get a cutoff on the animations. Right. So this is pretty much what we wanted to build. I mean, this seems to be initially complicated if you look at the code. But if you followed along as I was describing them, we have like a for loop over all the elements of the dots we have over here. And within each for loop, we create a new keyframes because each of these circles have different animation. And then using the random function, we kind of randomized almost all the things like the rotate, the angle of the rotation we have the translate that we have, and also the scale that, that initially we have to kind of generate this effect. So yeah, I hope you liked this tutorial. Please go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't, uh, and like and share this tutorial. This is one of the effects that I personally like very much. And yeah, so hope you have a great day and night, and see you next time.